Brad sucks, you gotta be able to find guys in the second round that can come in and contribute right away. For everybody's sake, Josh Pascal needs to work out. You could afford to miss on a second round pick. No, you can't. When you are rebuilding, you cannot afford it. But the problem in Detroit right now is your football team is one and four. All right, Jeff, Levi O out for the season. Did have back surgery during the bye week. Second round picks continue to fail for the Detroit Lions. Brad Holmes so far 0 for 1. Yet to be determined on Josh Pascal, but we're entering this... <laughs> <laughs> You're entering this uncomfortable situation where you miss two years in a row on a second round pick. That's not good. No, it's not. And I've given you Buffalo. I've given you Kansas City. Bring up the Chargers. I've given you the Chargers. Yeah. Hell, even the Broncos. Yeah, Broncos. You want talent? You got to nail those first and second rounders. Do you like getting an Amon Ross St. Brown in the fourth round? Sure. Really nice. Do you like getting a Malcolm Rodriguez who is just okay if we're all honest here? Sure, okay, we'll take some players here and there. But the reality is, round one and two, you got to hit big time. And Brad Holmes, he's hit on Panay. And that's it in the first two rounds. Hutchinson to be determined. You haven't seen Pascal or Jameson Williams play yet. No, uh, excuse me, play yet. Jeff, time to be concerned? Um, yeah, I'm actually going to say yeah. Uh, for, at this point, because it doesn't help that historically the Lions have not been good at second round picks. Like, I went back and looked. The, if you want to bring up the last eight years, you could maybe make the argument they've only had one good second round selection, and that would be DeAndre Swift. And he hasn't been the most healthiest, but really that's the only player the past eight years. Levi obviously missing the entire season. And then even go back further, 2019 was Jelani Tavai, 2018 was Carry On uh, Johnson. 2017 was T's Tabor. Like you're you're getting to the point where it's it's getting uglier and uglier. It's important. You, you got to be able to hit on these second round picks. Like you said, you look around the league, a lot of teams even have impactful players playing for them that they drafted in the second round. The Lions right now, we talk about the lack of of depth everywhere, especially on defense, a lack of talent. Doesn't help you missed on the last two picks. And it's crazy too, and I'm not trying to play devil's advocate i'm not trying to say that josh pascal shouldn't be the pick because i've yet to see him play but it's it's even more frustrating that brad knew about these injuries before he drafted them and, and now seeing how it's played out it doesn't really help his case like if you look at josh pascal taking 46th overall look at the guys that were after him jaquan brisker sam williams christian harris like these are players that our positions of need and would be able to make an impact right away. So for me, it is concerning. I don't think I'm going to say, you know, you shouldn't have taken Josh Pascal yet. I have to see him play. But for for Brad Holmes, if you want to talk about Brad, you got to be able to draft, especially hit on guys that can contribute right away and not be hurt in college or for Levi's sake, having that lingering back issue, you draft him and now he's going to miss the entire season and may even this may even end his career. So again, we can praise Brad. I still think he's probably, if not the best, one of the best general managers. I think it's only been two years, but I think when it's all said and done, he'll be the best general manager ever for the Lions. But a part of that is hitting on those second-round picks because he's good, done a good job past that. The fourth round, you find Malcolm in the sixth, but you got to hit on the second. There's still plenty of talented players available. In the last two drafts, he has yet to find I one. will say this about Brad Holmes that I don't like. I don't like this continuous habit of drafting injured players you don't have that right no you don't have that yeah there is no front office in the nfl that has that cachet outside of maybe a handful let's say that are legitimate contenders that could take a swing oh we could afford to miss on a first round pick you could afford to miss on a second round pick no you can't when you are rebuilding you cannot afford it and the reality is for everybody's sake, what I will say is Josh Pascal needs to work out. Needs to. Because if he doesn't, I'm going to look at Brad Holmes and say, you've had two drafts. I am missing two potential starters because you've decided to draft players who are injured. That's not a fun conversation to have, but that's the reality. You want to get into an uncomfortable conversation? Levi doesn't play well this year. Levi gets hurt again and doesn't play the rest of the season. 
You want to have a really honest conversation about the Lions' current situation? Not only does the coaching suck, you're now looking at the GM and saying, you've had two NFL draft classes. You couldn't pull one second-round pick. Not a good look. You were able to pull Sewell, able to pull St. Brown, able to pull a few starters here and there. Right. Good players. I have to give credit where credit's due. But, but I am to be determined on Pascal and Jameson Williams, even though we all agree j was the best wide receiver coming out of the draft prior to that injury. Fair? Fair. Cool. You did draft Aiden Hutchinson. These players need to start performing as much as anything for his sake. Yeah, yeah. Look, again, Brad Holmes earned all the praise that he had going into this year. And after that draft, why, Jeff? Amon Ross St. Brown, Penesul, that's why. Mm-hmm. If he's going into this offseason and you're questioning his number two overall pick, unsure of the number 12 overall pick, and then looking at the second rounder and he's injured again, Boy, you're not going to have as much of an optimistic, positive offseason as you'd like. Because that's not a good look. No. I can't even defend that. You know what's even more surprising, too? Like, he worked, he was a part of the Los Angeles Rams. And what did the Los Angeles Rams do so well the last couple of years? They didn't have first round picks, they were hitting on guys in the second round. Well, take away Cam Akers because that doesn't seem like a hit. But for the most part, they were able to find guys, contributors that can play right away in the second round. So you're right. I, I don't know in what you know uh, what mindset he had to be able to say, you know what, we're going to take two guys that have injury history, but I think they have tremendous upside. You don't have that right. The Lions right now, you need starters. You need guys that can contribute right away. And especially when you see who fell after Josh Pascal, or even going back to Levi, who was still there after Levi, it's, it's inexcusable. Yes, it's only been two drafts. But Josh Pascal's got to work out. That's got to be a contributor. Because if it isn't, and you miss on your first two drafts in the second round, it doesn't help you going forward. Because you're not always going to find an Amon Ra in the fourth. You're not always going to find a Malcolm Rodriguez in the sixth. Yeah, but that, that be able to equity hit in the has to count for something, though. And that's why I've been very supportive of Brad Holmes, though. Right? Yeah, no, I'm not going to take that and away from him. I know you've him. been the yeah. same way. It's just the reality. When you pull four or five starters... And two draft classes, to me, you're doing a good job. Right. Now, you, you would like it to be am I second. nitpicking here yeah. and saying, well, your second round picks haven't panned out? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. But I haven't seen Pascal play yet, so I don't want to even enter, entertain that yet. Mm-hmm. When Pascal sees the field, if he gets hurt somehow, some way, hopefully not, eh, there's going to be a conversation. But if he goes out and plays and he's. Giving him quality snaps. He's a starter. He's solid. You've put, now pulled six starters. Right. Which could be seven when J Mo comes back. I'm not seeing the issue with the GM here. Again, concerning that the second round picks aren't working out, yes, because you can date back the last two seasons, three season, uh three seasons, excuse me, players that were taken in the second round. You have players like an Asante Samuel Jr., right? You can find talent. Second round, I mean, these are borderline first round picks in the second round, especially when you're picking early. So there's talent there. I I believe the conversation this morning about Levi O being out is You would hope the same isn't the case for Josh Uh Pascal. You would hope that he gives you quality snaps. And if he does, again, I'm looking at my GM. He's giving me four, five, I could even say six starters in two drafts. What more could you ask for? Now, the cap is going to open up a little bit. He'll go spend out in free agency in the summer as well. And I believe everybody would be on the same page here. But the problem in Detroit right now is your football team is one and four. Your football team is one and four. And excuse my runny nose. It won't stop. I apologize. Not feeling great. Having said that, you're one and four. That's the problem. You're one and four because of coaching decisions. That's the problem. Right. Not because Pascal's not on the field or Jamison Williams. or It doesn't help that those guys are on the field. It doesn't help. But, but it's you're right. not the singular reason. I don't think those guys are the reason why he goes for it on fourth and nine. And so, I mean, it's it's probably a different conversation. Look, 
Ali, uh, Funky says second and third rounders. Aleem is solid, but if he and Joseph are a huge question mark, I would still give Kirby Joseph the benefit of the doubt as of now. I haven't seen anything alarming on tape. I haven't seen anything alarming in his character so far. I would say growing pains. Right, like the first game against Seattle. Not not the end of the world, but bounce back a little bit. Not the end of the world. I would I would agree on the iffy statement though. Oh man. What if Pascal sucks? Question from Eric Menina in the Woodward Sports well, Chat. I mean, that's again, like if we want to go, let's just bring up the Chargers, for example. I mean, they took Asante Samuel until 2021. He's a, a starting corner. Uh, the year before that, they took Kenneth Murray, a linebacker who's nothing special, but still a, a contributor. Like, this is why it's a problem. Uh, because if people want to complain about the defense, Second round picks are uh, the last two, three drafts are defensive players. Two drafts. Those guys are supposed to be helping you and contributing right now to the struggling defense, and they're not here. So that's why this conversation is being brought up. But you're right. I think there's other issues to look at. And for Brad Holmes' sake, I think a part of, uh, you know, part of being a GM isn't always about the draft. It's about spending money in free agency, and he hasn't really had an opportunity to do that until next offseason. So, again, it's not like this means Brad sucks, but you got to be able to find guys in the second round that can come in and contribute right away and have no question marks about injuries. Because I do, I did like the Josh Pascal pick, but I was concerned about those injuries, especially coming out and now having the hernia doesn't help. But if he could still find guys value in later in the rounds, it's, it's kind of keeping him still in this. Like you said, two to three starters a draft, and he's doing that.